on World News Tonight. Athletes enter. With the Olympics just a few weeks away, the stars of the show make their entrance. Passport rollout. The EU has made a historic initiative as people can now travel within the bloc at ease. Searching resumes. Rescue efforts still underway in Florida as President Biden pays a visit to the site. Honouring the Princess. Feud put aside as UK's William and Harry unveil their mother's statue. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Ada Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Anuradhi Wickramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining with us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage from the updates on the Tokyo Olympics. The dream has come true. We're just three weeks away from the Games, the IOC is on their toes at this point as athletes are making an entrance. To give us an update on this, we have Rasita Chandradasa who joins us now from Fukuoka in Japan. Rasita. Well, Arradi, as we approach the Olympics, athletes around the world are arriving in Japan in preparation of the event. We had around 168 athletes from 11 different countries yesterday, and according to the Olympic Minister Marukawa-san, they are all tested negative at the airport PCR testing. We also expect 100 odd athletes and the officials today from various countries, and we expect this to rise up as we approach the event where the government estimate put the total participants, athletes and the officials over 68,000. There was also some interesting revelation happened during a parliamentary hearing the other day. Answering question to opposition questions, uh, the government declared that four other athletes, excluding those two gun darning athletes, have been tested were tested positive before. While this came as a surprise, those four athletes included a one Sri Lankan official who were tested on last May. The IOC President Thomas Park is expected to arrive in Japan on 8th and on 18th he plans to visit Hiroshima and pay a visit to the atomic, dome, uh, atomic bomb dome. Some of the survivors of the atomic bomb uh, declared that Mr. Park is not welcome and they questioned his uh, stance of Olympic at any cost. With just 21 days ago to the Olympics and everything has pretty much settled down, not even a new corona spread can stop the event now. Over to you, Thank you. That was Other There in the World News special correspondent Rasita Chandradasa reporting from Fukuoka in Japan. We have some good news for you. The EU has rolled out its vaccine passports to make it easier for people to travel around the region. The digital certificate, which went into effect on the 1st of July, exempts the cardholder from travel or quarantine restrictions. The EU's digital COVID passports came into use on Thursday. They are meant to enable travel for people who can show they've been fully vaccinated, have immunity due to recent infection, or can show a negative virus test result. The certificates take the form of a QR code that can be printed out or shown on a phone. At Paris's Orly Airport, some of the first passengers to try out the system seemed happy. It's easy to use, says this man. Airports are worried though. They have warned of long queues if countries don't do more to coordinate the rollout that as EU member states take different approaches to handling the system. But at Orly on Thursday, Air France staff said the codes were speeding up checks. EU member states can hit an emergency break to bar travellers from regions where there is a spike in virus cases. Germany is already limiting arrivals from Portugal on such grounds. Even so, the travel industry will be banking on the scheme to get Europe moving again this summer. Moscow's mayor said health clinics will begin offering booster vaccine shots against COVID-19 as Russian officials scramble to contain a surge in cases blamed on the highly infectious Delta variant. 
some residents in Moscow are gearing up to get their third COVID-19 vaccination shot as Russia becomes one of the first countries in the world to begin revaccination. The country's health ministry recommended on Wednesday that clinics begin giving booster doses to people vaccinated more than six months ago. Russian officials are scrambling to contain a surge in cases blamed on the highly infectious Delta variant. The health ministry called the campaign an emergency measure as coronavirus cases in Russia sharply rise and vaccination rates remain low. Moscovites had mixed opinions. Russia has inoculated just 16% of its population since launching its vaccination program in January. That's in part because of widespread distrust of the shot, even as the country developed its own vaccines. Scientists behind the Sputnik V shot had previously said that protection lasts much longer than six months, maintained by memory cells. However, scientists have also recommended booster doses to keep the number of protective antibodies in the body at a high level, considering the rapid spread of the Delta variant. Australia will half the number of international arrivals it accepts after COVID outbreaks put half the population in lockdown this week. Let's cross over to other there in the world news special correspondent Timothy Phillip from Melbourne in Australia to give us more details. Timothy. Yes, I'm Ravi. The country's strict border rules have only allowed Australians and people with exemptions to enter. From 14 July, Australia will accept just over 3,000 people a week, a measure likely to last until next year. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said the cuts would reduce pressure on the quarantine system. Virus leaks from hotel quarantine, which is mandatory for all arrivals, have been the source of numerous outbreaks across the country. The Australian government has faced criticism for its strict border policies and the new arrival caps will make it even more difficult for many to return home. To mitigate some of the cuts, Scott Morrison said the number of repatriation flights for Australians wanting to fly home would be increased. It would also begin trialling home quarantine arrangements for vaccinated travellers. Scott Morrison indicated that arrival limits would not be lifted again until most Australians have been vaccinated, a goal that won't be achieved until next year. Back to you on Bali. Thank you. That was Other There in the World News special correspondent Timothy Phillip reporting from Melbourne in Australia. The WHO is warning that a new wave of COVID-19 could soon hit Europe. This comes as the UK and Israel, two of the world's most heavily vaccinated countries, are seeing a rapid rise in cases. A new wave could soon slam Europe. This, according to the WHO on Thursday, which said the decline in the number of COVID-19 infections in the region has now come to an end. The WHO's regional director for Europe, Hans Kluge, said a 10-week decline in the number of cases in the 53 countries in the WHO European region has been replaced by an upward spike of 10%. Kluge says the rise is due to mixing, travel, gatherings and an easing of social restrictions. However, he also noted that it comes against the backdrop of a rapidly evolving situation with the Delta variant. According to Kluge, the variant would be dominant in Europe by August and vaccinations will not have caught up. With millions still unvaccinated in the region, he stressed the importance of getting fully vaccinated reiterating that data shows vaccines provide protection even against the Delta variant. The UK confirmed 27,989 new COVID-19 cases over the past 24 hours, marking the country's highest daily figure since January 29th. It brings the total caseload in the past seven days to 146,360, a 71.8% rise on week. Despite that, the UK is still scheduled to lift its lockdown by July 19th after vaccinating the majority of its population. Israel is also seeing a spike, reporting another 307 new cases on Wednesday, the highest figure since April. The rise is being blamed on the Delta variant, with the health ministry expecting the daily figures to rise to 500 to 600 by next week. Officials say they may bring back the purple badge system, which sets requirements on businesses to allow them to operate. 
The country could also halt flights in and out of Israel. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Global warming is resulting in devastating comebacks from Mother Nature. A wildfire that began after three days of record-breaking temperatures has destroyed most of the small western Canadian town of Lytton and damaged a nearby hydropower station. A forest fire that ignited after days of record-breaking temperatures has destroyed most of the small western Canadian town of Lytton. That's according to local politician Brad Viss on Thursday, which also marks the Canada Day holiday. Viss said in a Facebook post, quote, the town has sustained structural damage and 90% of the village is burned, including the center of town. Lytton in central British Columbia this week broke Canada's all-time hottest temperature record three times, hitting 121 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius on Tuesday. Late on Wednesday, the mayor said the whole town was on fire. More than a thousand people in and around the town were then forced to evacuate. The extreme heat has punished residents far and wide. At least 486 sudden deaths were reported in the province of BC over five hot days. That's nearly three times the usual number, according to officials. An unprecedented heat wave has also left a rising death toll in its wake in the northwest United States. Christy Ebby, a professor at the University of Washington, says people often underestimate the danger of high temperatures. In Oregon, where 63 deaths have so far been linked to the heat wave, Governor Kate Brown this week declared a state of emergency, while the Portland Fire Department banned the use of fireworks for the 4th of July weekend. Over in the United States, U.S. President Biden pledged federal assistance and offered comfort to the families of those killed and missing in last week's Florida condominium collapse, as a search and rescue operation resumed after it was suspended for safety concerns. U.S. President Joe Biden traveled to South Florida Thursday, meeting with a coalition of first responders who have worked through rain and high temperatures to comb through the rubble after last week's condominium collapse in the town of Surfside near Miami that left 18 killed and 145 still missing. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The president and Dr. Jill Biden also stopped by a makeshift memorial and met privately with the families of those killed or missing. But the other reason I came down was to meet with the families. The whole nation is mourning with these families. They see it every day on television. They're going through hell. Thursday's visit came as search and rescue operations were temporarily halted due to concerns about the stability of the remaining structure. The last thing they would want and we would want is in the process of trying to recover and the possibility, there's still a possibility someone could be alive, someone could still be breathing, someone could be there. That the last thing you want to have happen is have that building collapse and kill 10, 20, 30, 50 firefighters. Biden acknowledged that hopes of finding any survivors dimmed with each passing day, but said it was possible someone might still be pulled out alive. Officials still do not know what caused the Champlain Tower South to come abruptly crashing down last Thursday morning. Whatever you need. Earlier in the day, Biden attended a briefing with local officials and said 100% of the search and rescue costs for the first 30 days would be covered by the federal government. Rescue and recovery teams resumed their efforts later Thursday evening. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland issued a moratorium on federal executions while a review of policy and procedure is pending to address serious concerns about the practice. On federal executions, the Justice Department will be conducting a review of its policies and its procedures. In a memo, Garland writes that the government must ensure that everyone is not only afforded the rights guaranteed by the Constitution, but is also treated fairly and humanely. He adds that serious concerns have been raised, including arbitrariness in its execution and the disparate impact on people of color. The death penalty in the United States has long been a contentious issue. Typically, it is individual states which handle executions for most matters. The federal government only gets involved in cases of drugs, espionage and terrorism. 
Rights organizations have often accused the U.S. justice system of disproportionately targeting people of color when handing out the death penalty. Those who murdered white people are more likely to be sentenced to death than those who murder black people. And 55% of inmates on death row are people of color, 15% more than the general population. The death penalty is an uncomfortable issue for Joe Biden. In 1994, he helped craft laws that added 60 federal crimes that qualified for capital punishment, including several that did not cause death. He later admitted those laws disproportionately affected black people. The moratorium is a sharp departure from the Trump administration. In its final eight months in office, an unprecedented 13 federal prisoners were executed, ending a hiatus which ran for 17 years. The Chinese Communist Party held a large celebration in Tiananmen Square to mark the centenary of its founding president Xi Jinping, vowed the country will never again be bullied by foreign power. As Beijing celebrated the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party on Thursday, President Xi Jinping warned foreign forces not to bully his country. In an hour-long address from Tiananmen Square, Xi pledged to bolster China's military, complete reunification with Taiwan, and ensure social stability in Hong Kong. He also vowed to protect and defend Chinese sovereignty from foreign forces. At the same time, the Chinese people will never allow any foreign forces to bully, oppress, or enslave us. Anyone who dares try to do that will have their heads bashed bloodied against the Great Wall of Steel, forged by over 1.4 billion Chinese people. Xi's comments were met with fervent applause from the 70,000-member audience and later became the top trending topic on Chinese social media. Under Xi, China has taken a more assertive stance on the global stage. The country has drawn international criticism for its treatment of Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang and cracked down on Hong Kong under a sweeping national security law implemented last year. It's also sent fighter jets and bombers to assert its sovereignty claims over democratically ruled Taiwan, whose president, Tsai Ing-wen, has repeatedly called Taiwan an independent country. While Beijing has never renounced the use of force to bring Taiwan under its control, she called for peaceful reunification on Thursday. All sons and daughters of China, including compatriots from both sides of the Taiwan Strait, must work together and move forward in solidarity, resolutely destroying any Taiwan independence plots. The Chinese Communist Party now boasts over 95 million members, according to data released on Wednesday. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A scaled-down replica of the Statue of Liberty that began its trip from France to the United States on the back of a flatbed truck last week, retracing the journey made over a century ago by its big sister, was erected on Ellis Island in New York Harbour. According to a Dutch study, 20% of pets in infected households caught the disease of COVID from their owners. No cases of transmission from pet to human or from animal to animal have been detected. It appears that two doses of a COVID-19 vaccine provide protection against the rapidly spreading Delta variant. The European Medicines Agency says the four EU-approved vaccines provide protection against all strains. 17 people were injured when police attempted to detonate some 5,000 pounds of illegal fireworks they had seized, resulting in an accidental explosion. The explosion damaged several homes, parked cars and shattered the windows of a nearby laundromat. The UN's World Meteorological Organization has confirmed that a new record high temperature was observed in the Antarctic. It added that the Antarctic Peninsula is among the fastest warming regions of the planet and warned that such new temperature records are in line with other signs of climate change that the world has been witnessing. And finally tonight, British princes William and Harry put their differences aside when they unveiled a statue to their late mother Princess Diana on what would have been her 60th birthday. The brothers, whose falling out has been subject of intense media focus, displayed a united front as they revealed the statue they commissioned in honour of Diana. If there was any tension today between the brothers, we couldn't see it. In the sunken garden, one of Princess Diana's favourite places, unveiling the statue they commissioned back in 2017. 
It revealed Diana alongside three children to represent the generational impact of her work. Prince William and Prince Harry released a joint statement. We remember her love, strength, and character. Every day, we wish she were still with us. Today, Harry greeting Diana's brother, his uncle Earl Spencer. But things have changed since 2017, the year they marked 20 years since Diana's death, and the year Harry got engaged all in that garden. I love William to bits. We were on different paths. After the dramatic fallout, they were last seen together at Prince Philip's funeral. And both brothers now an ocean apart, doing the kind of work that would make their mother so proud. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Suzanne Shinali will join you again on Monday with another edition of World News. I'm Anradi Vikramasinghe. Until then, stay safe and have a great weekend.